you ever sing a song and feel much better? Was music your perfect remedy? So now I want to get into a little bit about music entrepreneurship and the business. Um, it's not so much the business of music as entrepreneurship is having a, a business sense. And if you can bring a business sense to what you do to, in music, again, it'll give you more of a path that you can chart out. The other concept, and this is where I deputize the audience of the seminars to become evangelists for music ownership. Um, this article that I read was, by a, 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 was written by a guy named Ed Bott. What did Ed Bott do? Ed, excuse me, went and he read, he read the user agreements that each of us just, n that we don't read, and they just put click accept for three of the different downloading services, iTunes, um, Amazon, MP3, and eMusic. And what do these things say? You don't own it. You can download it, you can use it, but you don't own it. You have a very limited set of rights when it comes to digital music. You can't, and, and this, in terms of what you can't do, is the ultimate. E-music, 8,800 words, somewhere in the middle. You have no right to provide any files obtained through the service to any other party or through any other means. So you, can you imagine having an LP or a book? And, and handing it to somebody, or just about to hand it to somebody, and somebody comes along and says, nope, you don't own that. You can't pass along to anybody. You agree not to reproduce, retransmit, distribute, disseminate, sell, broadcast, perform, make available to third parties, or circulate the content received through this service to anyone. So not only has the ball been dropped about music ownership as a physical entity, even when you buy music nowadays, you don't own it. So... Your musicians, okay? Your songwriters, um, your music industry professionals. If you were standing in an elevator between the first and the tenth floor, and somebody turns to you and says, "So, what do you do for a living?" Would you be able to say in, let's say, 45 to 60 seconds, what it is that you do? If you can't, then your homework from the seminar is to come up with two or three paragraphs of what, how you want to represent yourself in 45 to 60 seconds. What do you want people to know about you? Do you want people to know about your musical abilities? Do you want them to know about your music style? Do you want them to know about your audience? Do you want them to know about your songwriting capabilities? Because it's very important. So you were saying that you're a, a, a singer and you like to write lyrics, but you're in a band and it's this genre. How quickly can you get that across? is the question, and be satisfied that you have done it in a, in a coherent fashion. What separates you guys from everybody else that does what you do? Why are you the apple amongst the oranges? And the example that I use is um, female singer-songwriters. And I love them. All right? However, if you've heard one angry woman song, you've pretty much heard every angry woman song. And if you're not going to be as good as Alanis Morissette at angry woman songs, then you might as well do something else. What it is that separates you from the rest of what everybody else does that you do? If you're a metal band, why are you a better metal band than these people? You know, if you're a tribute band, you know, why do you play Stairway to Heaven better than the other band? Right? You've got to figure out what is it that makes you special. Uh, I believe in freemiums. So what is a, what is a freemium? Freemium is when you give something away for free that still has value. But there's got to be a reason to give it away. So whether, that, whether you choose one song that becomes the calling card of the band, or whether you want to give away a song as, a, as a, a bonus to somebody who buys a CD, or whether you walk into a city that you're playing in and you want to give away a song so that uh, people will become familiar with your music and then want to find out more about your music, there needs to be a reason for you to give something away. What do you know about them? Like, really, what do you know about the people who come to listen to you? So basically, as, as I like to say, when you are not gathering information about people who have come and paid money to see you, you're leaving money on the table. The way that you build a relationship with your audience is by getting to know who they are and getting to know where they are and getting to have that one piece of information that you can communicate with them. 
right? So it doesn't matter how many fans you have on Facebook. If you don't actually know all of them or, or know what, how many of them have come out, to a, uh, come out to a show, you're actually leaving money on the table. Because that's how you're going to make money, not necessarily from being all over the internet, which I am with a lot of my son, I'm on all these different websites, it's connecting with the fans. The fans are the ones that are going to make or break you eventually. As I said earlier, I'm doing this because I love music and I love the impact that it has on individuals and it's something that I feel passionate about. So my company is called Icebox Music and I've built this network. And in this network, it, we're uh, focusing on three different areas. Number one is the seminars. Um, and this particular seminar seems to be popular on an ongoing basis, so I, I do this and I do some others. So it's providing music, with business, providing music business know-how to as many musicians or as many people as want to learn about it. So artist development, coaching resources, building teams, collaborations. So when I say things like resources, people don't always know where, where you find a recording studio. People don't always know the best place to buy instruments. People don't always know uh, if they want to buy insurance because they're about to travel on the road. Where should they get that? These are things that uh, the Icebox Network provides. We provide information on how to get yourself going in the music industry and taking those steps forward. You know, and then there's building teams. Do all of you know how to contact a radio tracker? Do all of you know the difference between a PR person, a promotions person, and a publicist? They're all important. And they all serve different fu functions. Does anybody know um, uh, a grant writer? If you want to go to, to uh, Factor and you want to get grants for your recording or you want to go down to the States, the grants for touring, or you want to promote yourself in the States uh, and there's grants for international business development. So there's a whole lot of different areas that, will, that, that Icebox provides that will allow you to reach the goals. And then certainly there is the, the information that I have regarding uh, licensing and placements and, what li and, and whatnot. And that's a, that is such a large area nowadays in terms of, um, uh, in terms of making money from it that that's a whole separate conversation to have. There are so many different places out there that you can uh, promote yourself on the web. The question that you have to ask yourself is, is it being done effectively or is your time being wasted? And I think that's one of the most important questions uh, to ask yourself as musicians is the time that you're spending on promoting yourself being used effectively. So be on the lookout for these upcoming sessions and I want to thank you all for coming here today. Is it music perfect remedy?